you are live hi hi Hello. <laughs> Hello. so we are here to talk picture books today um and i well i mean jack and i we came up with this well idea of chatting live with everyone and we're people that we've known to have a really strong connection with picture books and you three ladies were the first that came to mind. So we have Lindy at Lindy, Lindy's Magpie Reads, Alice in the Giant Bookshelf, and or Alice of the Alice in the Giant Bookshelf, and Dia at Novel Idea. So welcome. That's exciting. Us too. We're yeah. so glad you could all join us for it. I know. <laughs> We've had um, a lot of going about trying to figure out um, the right time for everyone because we have. We it, two people, two people in England, two people in the U.S., and one person in Canada, and so we span the time zones, I guess. Yes, so yeah. yeah, quite a wide variety of time zones to try and fit together. Yes, <laughs> but we did it. We're here. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so exciting. So, so I suppose we just start with the kind of. But just if anyone's watching this and wondering why we're talking about picture books, I suppose because Shelley and I have been running for April Picture This, which mm -hmm. is our kind of passion project, really. It's um, because both of us love picture books so much and we want to promote the idea that they are for everybody to read and that they are valid sort of literary works in their own right, not just sort of picture books or books for children. Um so yeah, so that's why we decided we wanted to have a chat, like we said, with some people who are definitely known for um, having a passion for picture books as well. So yeah. yeah, and I think we just wanted to sort of start, I suppose, with everybody's way into picture books or why they read them as adults. Just a little conversation about that to start with. So I suppose Shelley, you're. I'm going to ask you first, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you first because. Um, yeah, talking about, because you were saying you were quite interested in how people got into them as adults or why people still might read them as adults or sort of their journey to, to read them, like whether they've been continually reading them and not stopped or whether they sort of came back to them as an adult and, mm -hmm. and how that was. So what, what was that like for you? So I started working at the library and I realized that I was going to be running story time at the library. And I was in my early 20s. And I hadn't read a picture book in 10 years or something, you know, like, you know, it just had been a long time. And so I was like, well, what do I read to these little babies? They were like five years old about that was like the main target age group. And it was really interesting to start on that journey because not only did I want it to look good, but I want you were reading it aloud. So the orality all, all of a sudden became very important. And as I started getting excited when I was picking up these picture books and the kids were getting excited, I realized that other adults like picture books as well. And so one of the people I connected with was my father-in-law and we would swap like illustrators that we both liked. And so he was like, oh, have you seen um, all of Marie Sendak stuff? And I'd be like, no, but let me show you, you know, and I would send him a name. Um, and so we would kind of go back and forth. But really my way in was managing story time once a week. And so I would ha be constantly reading and looking at picture books. what would be good to read aloud, what wouldn't, what wouldn't. And then all of a sudden I was like, this is great. <laughs> like, I was like, the art is fantastic. It's beautiful. So on and so forth. So yeah so this is it and then you kind of just get swept away in them a bit don't you I, I don't oh know. yeah you definitely mm -hmm. de definitely yeah. um and lindy what about you because you're you you feature some amazing picture books mm -hmm. on your channel if anyone's like not following lindy's channel and you're into picture books like you really should i think um a really good diverse range of picture books that you feature so when I talk about picture books on my channel and then in the comments, somebody says, I'm going to pick up that picture book. I just go, yay. <laughs> no, I'm just going to read a picture book. <laughs> um, I have uh, three younger siblings and the youngest is nine years younger than I am. And so I was reading picture books to him 
uh, and then uh, went off to college to study library and information technology. And my favorite class was on um, school and public libraries. And we had a big section on picture books. And I just stayed interested in picture books my whole life. Um, it's, you know, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Somebody mm -hmm. will, who will say, okay, now, now this child is too old for picture books, time to read chapter books. Now you're too old for chapter books, it's time for YA. Now you're too old for YA, it's time for adult. And that does not make sense to me. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> Continue to read the picture books and chapter books. And as you get older, picture books, chapter books, and YA. You know, it's keep adding instead of taking mm. some away. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I, I completely agree with you. And it's that idea of kind of like that restricted, these boxes we're putting these age groups into is just, uh, yeah, because I, I often found the same thing with like when um, working, I worked with children right through from three to 11. And I would use picture books with the older children for, for teaching and, and, and quite often they're so engrossed in them. And, and it just, and I've had young sort of trainee teachers saying, but I've got year year three children over here, about seven, eight years old. No, we're going to do chapter books. They're too old for picture books. Like they're seven and eight years old. They'll love a picture book. Or the nine, ten year olds will love a picture book. So yes, yeah, so that kind mm -hmm. of like you say, it's like add to it and keep growing it, but not mm -hmm. restricting it. Yeah. yeah. And I had easy access to picture books for years as well because I worked at the Edmonton Public Library twenty seven years and. Oh, my cat's moving my computer. <laughs> and, and so I was surrounded by so many great picture books to choose from, to do story times, or just to share with patrons and to take home for myself. Yeah, so tempting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, Dia, what about you? Because you're always, you've always shared picture books as yeah. well. Yeah, you've got a great I... job for them. So I don't know that I ever stopped reading them. Um, I have cousins that are quite a bit younger than I am, and we were really close growing up. And so once I learned to read and could read to them, my, my grandparents and my aunts and uncles just kind of turned that over to me. Um, and then I taught at an early learning center uh, that was my very first job and I, I just never stopped that way. Um, my mom worked in hospitals when I was growing up and I used to just go and sit and read with the kids in the hospitals. Um, so I don't know that I ever stopped reading picture books because I got married when I was 18. Um, and my the the classes even that I was taking at college were art history, you know, and all of these other things. And picture books are so full of simple art, but there's there is, you know, you can trace the the classics, you can trace the the techniques and everything through the the art in them. And the the combination of art and story is something that has always captured me and picture books just do it in abundance and do it so well and so i never really stopped reading picture books i've read them i had kids um a year into our marriage we had our first child and i was like okay let's build this library <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so I was always on the hunt for the next one. Um, to this day, the first place that I go when I go to any bookstore is to the children's section. Um, and I literally will sit on the floor and grab books off the shelf and just sit there and read. Um, so I, I just never stopped. I love them. I absolutely love them. So... Mm. Yeah, it's so fun to sit in there and surround yourself with some picture books at the mm -hmm. bookshop. I did that a few weeks, well, a few weeks back in preparation for Picture This. It's just the best day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
dear. So, uh, Alice, how about you? So, um, yeah, when you asked us this, I was thinking, have I ever stopped reading picture books? And I don't think I have. I thought, oh, maybe in my teenage years I didn't read picture books, but I actually did. <laughs> um, I was, um, I, I sort of have seemed to have incorporated picture books into like every stage of my life. So um, even when I was at like sixth form college and university, I did projects around uh, like bringing them into projects for um, English language and uh, even for my degree I um, incorporated picture books into my dissertation um, so they always have been important and my mum was a teacher as well I was then a teacher um, so she sort of passed on that that love of reading children's stories I think it is really that's just been so important to me and actually was one of the main reasons why I wanted to go into teaching was just to share like that love of learning that love of picture books especially mm -hmm. um, and I always worked in the sort of early years and uh, key stage one so uh, up to teaching about eight-year-olds and I just think that there's such joy in picture books you know they um, ev every every part of my life has been influenced by them and um, like I was thinking earlier even YouTube I would never have got the confidence to start doing booktube had it not been for the fact that in the pandemic when we couldn't go into preschool and I was working at a preschool at the time I was like right how am I going to read stories to my <laughs> two three and four year olds and I was recording myself like reading a story each week and uh, like putting it online for the parents to watch and that was just so rewarding but I never would have got up the confidence to film myself for booktube without that and without pitch books so I love that <laughs> you know they've been a part of everything and I just still love absolutely love discovering new ones watching like, all your recommendations that all of you bring to me and uh, like go, again going to the library looking in the picture books even though like as Lindy said, there's like this idea that we stop. Um, like pitch books are finished now, but pitch books are never finished. Like a good book is a good book, right? Right. Regardless of whether it has pictures or right. words or what it has, a good book's a good book. Yeah. That's a really good way of putting I couldn't agree more with that. Um yeah. but yeah, I I think I'm the only one here who kind of I, I don't remember many picture books from when I was young. And I kind of as soon as I could read. I was straight into like I was about five or six I was reading Enid Blyton and I was into chapter books mm -hmm. and I just kind of just went and that's what I did and my parents didn't really read picture books to us and at school they kind of stopped reading picture books mm -hmm. oh. at quite a young age they quite um they kind of I think because they were trying to get you into this chapter book reading but of course I was already reading these chapter books and stuff so I kind of I've got memories of certain books that stick out for me from from school um but I was very young I was about you know four or five um and some books that I loved but they kind of was very very much I don't remember that being a part of sort of when I went to the sort of next stage of school from seven to eleven and then then I didn't come back to picture books until I did my teacher training um mm -hmm. and actually there were I was a bookseller before I was a teacher and the children's section I used to love the sort of chapter books and things that I remembered and then the picture book section would just I'd I thought they were lovely to look at but kind of I used to get annoyed <laughs> with them because <laughs> trying to find things for people was really difficult in the picture book section which I think you've mentioned about that in libraries Alice like because they're so Definitely. thin they're kind of like it's really they get messed up quite quickly as well and kids mm -hmm. and families come in and look at them mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't my section I wasn't then and then I went to a different bookshop and I was part of the children's department and I started getting more into picture mm. books. I would stop and I'd read them mm. to recommend them. And then I, my teacher training coincided around this just after that. Um, mm. And yeah, from that point on, I was obsessed with picture books <laughs> mm. because they are just, um, there's just so much in them if you stop, take the time to stop and just read them and just look at them mm. and in, and sort of, um, take in what you're looking at and think about it a bit mm -hmm. and I just found 
I can get you can get so much out of a picture book when you're talking with groups of children and then I just for my own my own pleasure in reading them I was sitting reading some today and just wondering and I just feel immense joy when I'm reading them mm-hmm. just the art because mm-hmm. they're just pieces of art they're so beautiful that that whole aesthetic side to them and you just look at the skill in putting them together and and it just I'm always in awe of of amazing illustration um mm-hmm. I just yeah so I've, I've kind of not stopped and even though I don't sort of teach in class anymore I still buy picture books <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. still buying them I'm still I get them when I you know when I can and um yeah they, they, just, they bring me joy, My class joy. Would love this and then you think well, I don't actually have a class oh, well, I, I wouldn't get it anyway I don't have a class anymore. <laughs> um but sometimes I do sort of you know um uh like supply or substitute teaching sometimes I'll do that I haven't mm. done that for a while but I do still have um I still am able to do it I'm still part of a company if I want to go and do it I can so I've got some books I'll always bring books with me so mm. I've got them ready to go if I need them like oh, I've got a story for you like obviously just go in to get my fix of, of reading picture books <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah yeah so yeah I, I absolutely love them but I think and and it's kind of I find it really when we were thinking about picture this and Shelley and I were talking about like why why is it that like people don't people would get more I think a lot of people just do see them as children's books and that's it and we wanted to promote that sort of joy that we both feel when we what what you can get out of them because there's like they they seem simple but they can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be I think mm-hmm. depending on what you bring to them um so yeah so it kind of that was my in way into it but yeah not stopped since <laughs> obsessed <laughs> yeah do we want to say hey to the chat for a minute or- yeah all right so charlie says hi lovely ladies hi charlie, hi, charlie. <laughs> We also have Cat's Novel Adventures. Hi, Cat. <laughs> we have Chatty, the Mad Chatter. She says hello. Hey. Can't stay because <laughs> she has a six-year-old birthday party at a farm. Oh wow! Okay, fun. Look forward to watching later. Have a lovely chat. Um, and then she says that her and her son love Mimi Gray picture books. Oh, I like oh, I've got some Mimi Gray, Gray on my stack here. Oh, oh you do. Yeah, I do. Show, can you show some just so that <laughs> I'm like putting you on the spot so that everyone knows who she's talking about? Right. This is the mini gray oh. I first heard of when I was teaching. And oh, this is one I've read yeah. since teaching. Space oh, you love? Yeah. Oh, it's one of my this is yeah. my favorite of last picture this April. So cute. But this yeah. I have absolutely loved using with classes. It's so funny and <laughs> so good. Great. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you for sharing. Um, we <laughs> also have Melissa at Fully Booked. Hi. Hi. Hi <laughs> um, Kat, she says, I adore picture books. Um, and then she mm. follows it up with picture books are wonderful mentor texts for teaching all kinds of reading strategies and topics. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, and then I really quite like that. And then Melissa says, my daughter is eight and her reading level is definitely now chapter books, but she much prefers graphic novels and picture books. I encourage her to read it all. Good Absolutely. for you, mama. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always, just, it's just so, um, I love that graphic novels have also gotten quite popular because I think it is another way to appreciate art, art and words mm-hmm. together. Um, and I think it is sometimes not a more natural progression, but I think if a kid really is drawn to that art, that they can also add to um, their reading with graphic novels. So. And visual literacy, too, has become so much more uh, important in our daily lives. Mm-hmm. And yeah. graphic novels and picture books help with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because we're talking about visual literacy and I've kind of, I keep wanting to do a video on wordless picture books because I can't, Mm. I've lost count of the amount of times when I've talked to like, I teach, because I do teacher training, train trainee teachers and talk about wordless picture books and they're like, oh, well, um, isn't that for younger children who can't read? I'm like, no, they're so Mm -hmm. complex. Actually, yeah. you need a lot of narrative understanding to read a wordless picture book because you're essentially telling the story to yourself. And in a way, mm-hmm. the pictures do tell you, but yeah. you've got to be able to 
to you've got to have all that narrative knowledge and younger children will get something out of wordless pictures but older children will get so much more out of them because they're yeah. bringing this kind of inference and storytelling to it so mm -hmm. um yeah it's, it's interesting what you say about visual literacy lindy it's so important like uh, yeah crucial what have you got there Shelley? i know i have my i have uh, flora the flamingo which is a wordless picture book <gasps> and it's by molly idol i think oh, and these down. <laughs> it's it's a wordless picture book and it's just it's about like a little friendship but it's a little girl who's sort of dancing mimicking a flamingo it's beautiful <laughs> And it's really pretty, but I was, I, it made me think about when I was doing story time, one of my favorite story time books were wordless picture books because off the cuff, mm -hmm. you can kind of like you cut, you know, you read it, you process it yourself, but I would almost perform the book for the kids and I would tell my own narrative with, to them. And sometimes it was, well, to be honest, it was sometimes a little bit easier than reading it, the words on the page because you're yeah. kind of turning or you have to practice it. I would practice beforehand. But when I just had the wordless picture book, I could just do it like off the cuff and it was always really fun. So yeah. it was really enjoyable. My yeah. favorite thing to do is to sit with one of my grandkids or my kids at the time and th then have them tell me the story. And, exactly. and they would, I would be like, so what do you think is going on here? You know, and and what is she feeling? And what do you think? What do you think is going to happen next? You know, and then turning the page and seeing that what they thought was going to happen next could easily be what's going on on the next page. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's it was just such so much fun to get them interacting and not not just sitting by and listening but actually being a part of it yeah and, they're not a passive they're they're an active right. storyteller right yeah. and the other thing that i found with wordless picture books that was so great in teaching was that it it because the pictures flow a certain direction that you can get them moving their eyes the correct way Oh, to mm. and and it really helps with like dyslexia and that that kind of thing because you're wow. following pictures and graphic novels are also very good for that because you're following mm. a story line as long as the graphic novels are actually indicating what the story is and not just people talking mm -hmm. um but you're following that storyline and it's getting your eyes moving the correct direction and you're looking for the correct sequence of things. And so it helps with that. Mm. That's awesome. really good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to our chat and kind of catch up. So this is Julie mm -hmm. at the Rambling Reader. So hi, Julie. Oh, hi, Julie. Hi. <laughs> Um, Charlie at Charlie Brooks Reads says, um, the very hungry caterpillar is the one that I remember from being little. The kids at the library now still love it. Picture books are a fantastic gateway into reading. I just love it. Um, I remember all of the ways I was thinking about how brilliant, um, the very hungry caterpillar is not only do they talk about numbers, they talk about days Dang. of the week. And I mean, it was just like, it's such a smart book. To have put mm -hmm. all that information in a in a narrative that also makes sense and then transformation and all that. It's um, in, it's incredible. It's like it's so it's still to this day, every year in sort of reception and nursery classes, which are the younger sort of kindergarten and, and, and mm -hmm. preschool classes here, they teach the hungry cat. Everyone teaches with hungry mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's still the best thing for the life cycle. So we do it in usually do it in spring and you do life cycles and you do then then you've got your days of the week and you've got also that sequencing. Oh yeah. And then you know, and then you've got the number and you've got mm -hmm. and it's just fun. And the colors. <laughs> so the, the colors, colors. Just, yeah. The colors are great. Yeah. And yeah. but I have to say, I've watched so many um job applic applicants for early years positions and we get them to teach a lesson and when you've seen one lesson on the very hungry caterpillar you've seen them all you kind of say, oh oh you're doing the very hungry caterpillar oh lovely <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, now I know what not to bring. If they are, if I cannot have an interview, I'm not going to bring the very hungry caterpillar. Love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie says they say a picture is worth a thousand words, which is one hundred percent true. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Golden Zebra says, um, when I was young, my dad bought me and my siblings a ton of picture books, um, picture children's books, even an illustrated Bible, and he would read it to us every night until I was ten years old. So special. That it really is. Um, my mm -hmm. husband and kids are doing that. They do that every <laughs> night. They have an illustrated Bible and they read it every mm -hmm. every night and it's very sweet it's just a few minutes too mm -hmm. and then she also says i think that's where my love for uh art comics and manga come from until now i still have some books and use them as artistic references for my drawings mm -hmm. do you all find that to be true as well <clears throat> like is this does is it is it sort of the the base or uh, connected to your love for art or your love for visual rep representation does it come from picture books or is it connected to picture books? It might be. <laughs> I've never really stopped to analyze where it comes from, but some of my some of my favorite artists are picture book artists, and mm -hmm. and so I think that it's you know there's definitely some of that in there. But I love the fact that with picture books where don't cry at books. I never have. But with picture books, I come the closest. And I think it is that intersection of art and story. And the unique way that our, it touches our emotional center. And so, yeah, I mean, you can't help but appreciate art when you, you are touched so deeply by what story it is telling so yeah mm -hmm. yeah i think it's, it's quite when you say that it's like I, i'm saying like she was just thinking about a picture book that i did a, a short for the other day and it's one that just resonated with me in the words the story but the pictures as well and actually very emotional about it but um i think when you were talking about art whether it, it sparks a love of art it's often the first art that children see isn't it it is mm -hmm. the, like it really unless you've got a you're in a home where there is art on the walls or that kind of thing or you've got family does that it's often the very first interaction children will have with art isn't it mm -hmm. I've actually yeah. thought quite a bit about that and the connection to our love for art starting with picture books because it's a tactile you know if you put art on the walls or even if you're taken to museums you look mm -hmm. at it from afar with picture books, you're touching it. Touch. You're getting very, very close. You know, mm. you can like see the you know, the granular detail. Oh, um, yeah, Lindy, that. you make your own. You you are an artist. You have yeah things that you make. I hadn't thought about picture books in connection to my own uh, creative output. I have noticed that when I go to an art museum or you know gallery or something like that. I come home all energized and wanting to create. Uh, but I have picture books around me all the time and I look at them all the time. And so I, I, I guess that does fuel my uh, creative urges. I just hadn't thought about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I know it's love what you say about seeing the, the, the sort of very, seeing this brush strokes almost in picture mm -hmm. books as well. I always, absolutely love it one of the things i've read um today is a, a new book for me for the for picture this and it's um there were two books actually that i read today where i could see the up uh, the, uh, the strokes of the pen or the brush or whatever and there was this one dim sum palace which is amazing and you can see the um the sort of pencil strokes i mean you probably won't see it on the camera here but um but you can kind of see the, mm -hmm. the way that the picture was put together. But it it, it just looks, I just love that because it's kind of, it feels the texture and I like textured drawings for me. They just feel a bit mm -hmm. more alive and a bit more lively. Right. I really enjoy that mm -hmm. about them. Um, so it's that one. And the other one I just sort of mentioned to you guys before we started, which is this one, which was new to me. 
and it's a wordless picture book, The Depth of the Lake and the Height of the Sky. Oh. It's by a Korean illustrator, graphic designer. And it's her first picture book. And it was illustrated using writing ink. But when oh, I was wow. reading it, I only read that at the end. And while I was reading the book, because it's about a boy going into nature from the city, going on a holiday in nature. And I could just see these leaves and the different sort of um, textures and the depths to the pictures. And it's all creative with this writing ink. And it's just, yeah. just beautiful. I just, I just, I was just marveling at how beautiful this, these illustrations are. And they're so, they're kind of, uh, the sort of way she's kind of, I'm trying to think about it kind of, you know, when you can see things distant and close, I can't think of the word now, the sort of depth perception mm -hmm. kind of, she's rendered it really beautifully with just different shades of ink, which I just was a blown fascinating. by. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. fascinated by it when I was yeah. looking at it. Mm. Absolutely. I really like seeing um, the artist's hand. Too. I do too. Yes. Yeah. And I also like color and shape and stylized images. And mm -hmm. even though you can do that really well with digital art, I prefer collage or multimedia where you can actually see in the picture book the different pieces that have been put together. Mm -hmm. um, there are artists like John Klassen, and I love mm -hmm. his work, love his work, where he does a combination. So mm -hmm. he... This one Ooh, does that. I love really, that this, ah, there. <laughs> <laughs> this one does it really, really well. This one has, she actually went, I'll show you the end papers. So she oh. actually went and took pieces of wallpaper and pieces of curtains and things out of this really old farmhouse that she found that they ended up buying. And wow. it was falling apart. And her way of saving it was to illustrate a children's book with those pieces. And it was absolutely incredible. So beautiful. I love it. The idea of it is just so beautiful, isn't it? To mm -hmm. preserve something like that. And, Wonderful. Uh, that reminds me of, okay, see if I can... Yeah, here we go. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> it's like, no, I might I'm doing the same thing as that. I know, it's a little Everything shaky at that. first. So this, yeah, and the whole idea is to, uh, that, so that this pretty. girl is peeling away wallpaper and oh. finding what's underneath. Oh, that's And a whole amazing. different world is there. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, wow. My oh, oh, my gosh. That's so Amazing. delightful. <laughs> that is fun. Yes, this who, is fun. Who's the yeah, author? Tao Lam. T-H-A-O-L-A-M. Tao Lam. Um, have, you, have you read any Jeannie Baker? Oh, oh I, I have. love Jeannie Baker. I've oh. got one Jeannie Baker book here, actually. Mirror. Do you? Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show it to you, actually. Let me grab it quickly. So, so Jeannie Baker uses... Um, uh, natural materials and mm -hmm. makes like dioramas. Yeah. Yes. So cool. So did you see that's the diorama and inside? So this book's really amazing. I sent this by this lovely um, Instagrammer who sent it to me off of the first picture. This and she got this for that and she sent it to me afterwards. And um, I'd read one Jeannie Baker book before, which I hadn't realized called oh gosh, what was it called? Window, which is amazing. That was window really is amazing and yes. it's um you know just seeing the changes through the through the window and everything else and then so this one though it's like two stories one is in set in a family in sydney one side is in english one side's in arabic just here and that's the only sort of words we get in it and it's a mirror of the day in the life of two families one in morocco and one mm -hmm. in Sydney. And so when you open it up, it's kind of opens up two ways. There's the Arabic side and you get that family and you're supposed to read it in tandem. So you get this sort of this picture here for their, they're waking up in the morning. So and then on the Sydney side, um, you've got the exact same thing, but it's mirrored and it's this family's day kind of like this. And so as you read through, you see the similarities and the differences between the two lives and the two families and cultures. And it's just, 
it's just amazing. Like there's so much, so much to talk about in this book. If you read it with a child or with a, with a class, and it's just so many things to notice, and just a great stimulus and st- like discussion starter about. Are co- like different differences and similarities between families and cultures so I just yeah I love this so much but her like you said you've got this picture at the back of her um of Jeannie Baker putting the, the work together she's put some pictures in of, the, of her workshop mm-hmm. and talking about the processes and the natural mm-hmm. materials and when you look at the work in this they're just I'd love to see a, a um an exhibition of Jeannie Baker's actual mm-hmm. pieces it would be amazing oh. amazing stunning yeah uh, I, I agree that the window is also stunning oh, really good one. passage of time and uh she did the a similar thing with uh, where the forest meets the sea and it shows mm-hmm. how a landscape changes over time mm-hmm. yeah I'd love to I, I need to read more Jeannie Baker I think I've, I've not read enough Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, Britta Teckentrop's The Swing. Oh, I love her. Yeah, she's great. I I've, oh, I've not read The Swing. Talking about passage of time, though, because in this book, uh, you see a swing that's mm-hmm. on a, a hilltop by the ocean and, uh, mm-hmm. and how different people use it in different ways. And you know, as they get into their teenage years, they kind of hang out there and drink and then they become adults and have kids who use the swings. And yeah, it's very sweet. It's I love lovely. That. But yeah, that, that idea of passage of time being shown this way, it's very, it's actually, that's a very emotional thing. I find when I, when I things like that, I find that very, um, that it brings a lot of uh, emotion and into it for me, definitely. Mm-hmm. Her um, book, the Britta Tittencup's book, um, J- My Happy Place, I think, A Happy Place, is one that I have on reserve at the library right now. I have to go pick it up tomorrow. Oh. I'm writing all these things down. By I way. know. I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> as we're talking. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to keep up. Wait, but then I have to remember I could go back in the recording. And, and figure this out right, instead right. of doing it live. But I'm like, I can't help myself. I hear a title and I'm like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh my goodness. Um, but let me see. Let's get, I'm going to go back to her comments. So uh, Noe says, glad I could catch this live. So hi. Hi. Um, Sandy Yay, says, hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. <laughs> um, Cat's novel adventures, wordless picture books are wonderful for create creative writing. Oh, mm, they I haven't thought about that. I use them all the time for creative writing. I love them so much. I've got a couple here that particularly I love for that. So cool. <laughs> right I love that. I hadn't really mm-hmm. thought about it, but mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that in my back pocket <laughs> so I can pull that out later. All right. Um, it's honestly such an impressive medium. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm. And then Kat McNeese says, I always prefer the gr- <laughs> the grouchy over here, ladybug. Wait, over here it's called the bad-tempered ladybird. Yeah. <laughs> the bad-tempered oh, ladybird? Yes. yes. Because, because ladybugs are ladybirds over there, right? Yeah, ladybirds. Oh. Yeah. We call the them ladybirds. The bad-tempered ladybird. <laughs> okay, I cry more often at picture books than any other type of book. It's a mix of art and text. Um that gets me, I suppose. Mm. Yep, I agree. And then a, a second for the grouchy ladybug, or what is it? The bad tempered ladybird? Yeah, the bad tempered <laughs> ladybird. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Translate that's the English translation. <laughs> I'm just like, what is it? <laughs> um, I don't know if she's still here, but this is one of my students. She's telling me hi. hi. So hi, Tegan. Oh, hi, girl. Hi. Oh, <laughs> I have a channel and she's catching me live. So, okay. What was that book called with the Korean illustrator? Oh, um, it's called um, The Depth of the Lake and the Height of the Sky. And I'm going to do a review of it because it was just, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful book. Um, the illustrator is Kim Ji-yoon. Kim Ji-yoon. Hmm. 
There we go. I think I forgot it on the screen Oh, did she there. do the book of the subway as well, maybe? I don't know. This was her first book, so I don't know how old this is. Um, hmm. So it might be that she's done something else since. Yeah, this is 2017, so it could be she's done other things since. I think I have the sub the subway that she did, which was, um, I'm almost positive it's the same illustrator because she it was about, uh, it's just taking a moment in time with the subway, I forget. But anyways, it was one of the New York Times best illustrated picture books. So oh, yeah, could well be. This one was a, <laughs> uh, looks like an award winner of some kind as well. Junior Library Guild Gold Standard Selection. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I mean, good art, good artist, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right. This one says, uh, "This is a wholesome, nice to see a reading community on YouTube coming together." Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, that idea of the har farmhouse books book is the next one, and the next one is such a cool one. It's like scrapbooking, very much. Yeah. Very mm. much so. And then, yeah, if I, I was an artist and a scrapbooker, <laughs> perfect, right? I would be doing that. I'm yeah. not an artist. <laughs> I know. Um, Sandy mentions the artist Bill Braun. I don't know this artist. Do oh. you all know this oh, artist who does 3D that is all paint and they are so cool? I don't know. Oh, don't know. no. So, huh. kind of like an optical illusion, I suppose. Maybe. Mm. Huh. And then I've made um, a note of that, Sandy. I'm going to. I've made a note too. <laughs> <laughs> I know there yeah. used to be a chalk artist that would do 3D illusions. Yes. And so you would walk, be walking on the by the streets yeah, mm -hmm, on the on pavement, board. and then it would yeah. almost look like you would be falling into a hole, but it's, yeah. it's just chalk. Mm -hmm. It was very cool. It was very, very Amazing. cool. All right. And then this one has some questions. So, which kind of book are you able to pull more emotional? Which Wait. kind of book that are able to. Is that right? Which kind of books that are able to pull more emotional reaction out of you? The illustrative type or the sweet old sweet oh. old text only? <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I can read, I can I'll read. No, they're just saying, I think the question is if you could choose one or the other, would it be a, an illustrative book or a text only book? Ah, so like wordless or with maybe text. or text only, maybe chapter book. Hmm. Uh I don't know. Hmm. Well, I already <laughs> said that I don't cry at anything, but picture books get the most emotional reaction from me. So hmm. yeah, I would probably say that emotional reaction that they pull that out of me the most. Whereas I'll cry at anything. Me too. <laughs> I was going to say you'll cry at anything. Mm -hmm. I, do. I cry at, I I cry at songs on the radio. I cry at adverts. <laughs> yeah, adverts. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will, like, literally squeal with delight when I see a really well-done picture book. And I don't have that gleeful reaction to typically I don't with books like when I'm just reading them like novels even just regular novels mm -hmm. <laughs> but Actually, they don't make me cry they make me like very happy <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, it's like you're quite right because I was thinking about to, I I sit I was sitting reading these picture books today and I was like this just gasping <gasps> <sighs> yeah you know and mm -hmm. I, I I very rarely have done that while reading a uh, regular old text only book mm -hmm. um like gasped very it happens usually when there's a shocking moment in a book <gasps> i'll do that but oh, the, gosh, like, yeah. the pure joy and just awe um mm -hmm. I, I will often be make i'm <laughs> quite emotive when i'm reading them like, oh, mm -hmm. ah! you know <laughs> so yeah i the picture books get that reaction from me whereas i don't necessarily for the other things but mm -hmm. yeah we have a bunch of people that are with us on this. So Sandy oh. says, I cry at commercials. And <laughs> Melissa says, easy criers of the world unite. Yay, <laughs> Yay we're a club. I'm not, I'm not part of that club, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll unite with you anyway. Oh, <laughs> in solidarity. <laughs> I'm supportive. <laughs> supportive, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so funny. So funny. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Oh, it's nice that so many people have joined us. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> How we got down to? Right. 
Uh -huh. um, so the other thing we were going to talk about, I think, was um, just in terms of like, what is it? I suppose we talked about it a little bit, but I don't know, like, what what is it that we can get, what do you take from picture books like why not just the joy in them but is there something mm -hmm. sort of deeper or is there mm -hmm. something like you know anything so I won't go to pick on anyone particular to answer that I just want to throw that one out there because um I kind of I I will promote that essay I've mentioned to you guys mm -hmm. that Sean Tan essay um which is fantastic and it's uh Sean Tan if anyone's not familiar with is a, an amazing Australian yes. picture book artist, you I believe. Got it, Lindy. <laughs> yeah, yay! I love yay! Yay! Eric is one of my Eric, favorites. And I, of I love Eric. Uh, I have yes. so I've got the arrival here. <gasps> I uh -huh. love the arrival. And um the lost thing um is another oh. one which I couldn't find this morning. It must be upstairs because I've got picture books all over the place at the moment. Um, but um he wrote this amazing essay. Uh, picture books who I think it's who are they for but he in within it he sort of talks about the fact that um picture books are for, for, in his mind they're the one of the only sort of they're kind of a, given an age restriction mm -hmm. <laughs> like what you were saying earlier Lindy and and yet he doesn't understand that as an artist because he when he makes art for a gallery he's not often asked who he's made it for but when he makes a picture book they're like is this for adults is this for children they're questioning who it's for and he's mm -hmm. like it's not for anyone in particular it's a book it's like it's his art mm -hmm. you know um and he says something like um where is it i've got took a bit of a note of it which i thought was really good he said um about simplicity and he says Simplicity certainly does not exclude sophistication or complexity. We inherently know that the truth is otherwise. Art, as Einstein reminds us, is the expression of the most profound thoughts in the simplest of ways, which I thought was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Is there any, any book that strikes you or springs to mind that you think, well, simplicity, but like has affected you in, or, or made you think, think about things in a more complex way? Let's throw that out there. I, um, when I was first with my husband, when we were first starting to date, um, there's the Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. <laughs> and my husband, I said, my dad used that book to talk me, to talk to me about evolving industry, how the steam shovels were replaced by electric shovels. And in that it kind of like the, uh, evolution of the way that industry evolves, like in, in the industrial revolution kind of thing or like how things die away in terms of um, technology and how new things spring up and he and then ted looks at me my husband and he was like my dad taught me about horizon lines with that book <laughs> and um something totally different something totally different and we both had i remember just being like oh wow, I, my dad would never teach me something like that because he doesn't see horizon lines. I mean, I love, you know, he thinks more about machinery technology and how we're using things and how things become obsolete. And, you know, his, but my husband's dad is very into art. And so he, of course, taught me something that was very artistic. <laughs> That's amazing. That's like, that is like a perfect illustration of, of, of reading for me because mm -hmm. we all bring our own experience right. and life and things exactly. and, and this is why when you teach I, I I can't I obviously I teach reading and reading comprehension but I find that such a narrow it's it, school's view of that is very narrow right and there's always a, a right answer they're kind of looking for and there's always and I just find like reading such a complex thing and for me it's like if you see something in a book <laughs> and clearly both your fathers like approached this book from their perspectives and brought something completely different, which is why it's so wonderful doing group reads, right? When we talk about doing mm -hmm. group and, 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 and buddy reads of things. Um, but that's, that's just a perfect illustration of that for me. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. And I've, I've always, I think we both also had, it was a connection that we had with an adult you know, because mm. like yeah. I didn't always, you know, when you're little, you don't always maybe connect with a certain person. And so my dad was somebody I didn't always have that connection to. But then we had that moment. It's like I still remember it today because we, he was taking the time to teach me something. And that was really impactful on me. And I think mm. it was the same for him. And so 
when we had that moment, I just, it always stands out to me now. <laughs> like when we were dating, I was like, we talked about Mike Mulligan and how important it was <laughs> in our lives. I and, love um, that. Just That's great. Brilliant. It was just great. So, yeah. Mm. And hmm. that really well done sort of I, complex, complex things that you can demonstrate to. Yeah, I, I love that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, there, and there are picture books that are kind of clearly meant to tackle a complex idea. But they do it with such simplicity. There's that. Um, has anyone read um, the suitcase? Have you ever read that book? It's by. Um, I wish I had a copy of it. I don't. I borrowed it from the library last year for a picture this, but I didn't um, get my own copy. But it's by um, Chris Naylor. Ah, he's got a hyphenated name. I'll look it up before the end of the show. But it's a really simple um, and very like it looks like a very simplistic typical children's picture book where it's like quite simple illustrations and there is a fox and a rabbit and a chicken and there's this <clears throat> creature that turns up who's quite you can't tell what kind of creature this creature is and this creature's dragging a suitcase and the creature has <clears throat> they're, they're sort of why are you here and why have you got that suitcase and and he says oh in the suitcase I've got everything that means something to them or something I, ca I can't remember how he puts it and they they start having bickering because this creature they goes to sleep and he's he's exhausted, and the other creatures start arguing about this creature whether he's to be trusted or not. And then one of them wants to look in his suitcase, and and in the suitcase he finds a picture of I think it's a family in a house and a broken teacup. And they're like, what does he mean? He's got everything that means something. It's an old broken teacup. And basically, as the story goes on, it's this idea of someone who's had to flee their home. And what they brought with them and what's meaningful to them and it's just told in this really simple way with these creatures and 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 it's, that's really affecting um mm -hmm. but very it's a very complex idea in a very simple way something that's first told mm -hmm. in a really I'd, I'd highly recommend it it's a really really great book um that, uh, and that's, that, that does sound fabulous uh, mm -hmm. i was thinking about how oliver jeffers tackles really complex topics in mm. a simple way yes he definitely does mm. um, a lot of a lot of adults can enjoy oliver jeffers he's, he's amazing mm. the, the heart in a bottle that one that's amazing oh um, you've got well, some oliver jeffers yeah, with you once upon an alphabet yeah um the really good thing about this and i found it in a library sale recently it's like 10p or something i was supposed to give this to my nephews <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've given it to my nephews. Um, but it's like literally every letter is like a one page story. So you've got just like a really short story about each letter. And wow. it's really brilliant because it's yeah. obviously 26 tiny stories. But they're so clever. Such a clever book. And I think Oliver Jeffers is a really, really clever. Amazing. Writer. Wow. Yeah. I haven't seen that one before. I have Kobe Yamada and his books oh, yes. are amazing. They are incredible mm -hmm. for um, teaching a very complex idea in a very simple manner. And he has somebody different illustrate all of his books, but he has, what do you do with a problem? He has, what do you do with a chance? Mm -hmm. And then ah, yeah, what do you do with an idea? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and um, uh, this one is my favorite. I love what do you do with a chance because the chance becomes something that is tangible. That and and so it's not just this this idea that's out there, or this thing that might pre you know this uh, nebulous thing that might present itself. No, it's a tangible thing, and it comes to him, and he is a, a little afraid of it and it's tiny and he thinks maybe he might you know harm it if he if he you know or it might harm him he doesn't know because he's never seen it before and there's it he just pulls the reader in to these ideas and this illustrator does a beautiful job it's may be some but mm -hmm. but you know he the sorry the art is like 
these dark colors and he's the only one in color mm -hmm. and then the the chance is coming to him and he sees it but nobody else seems to notice the chance and so he thinks even that you know he might just be making it up kind of thing and then mm -hmm. as it goes along you get more more color but it's still mm -hmm. just him him and the chance that That's are beautiful. and mm -hmm. it's just beautiful the way that that he um encourages you as the as the reader to take a chance and That's a clever idea isn't it um mm -hmm. he actually put his dedication in here is for his two kids and it says, when something extraordinary shows up in your life, I hope you see it for what it is, a gift. Amazing. And and so anyway, I really love Kobe Yamada's books, all of them. Um, he has different illustrators for, he has series of books, but each series has a different illustrator, but they mm -hmm. all are these really soft, um, like pen and ink with, a little bit of watercolor kind of drawings and and illustrations and they're just beautiful but he does that he takes those really complex situations that kids may not know how to handle that adults may not know how to handle <laughs> and breaks them down into these wonderful opportunities and it's just yeah i love it yeah, we can all use a reminder to take those chances, grab a chance. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the way that illustrator that you were showing there used black and white and color mm -hmm. and, and really bright color for the chance, that bright yellow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That's one of my favorite good. things, that color, use of color. The, mm -hmm. um, Cause I, 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 I've uh, been looking, you're talking about more wordless picture books. So we've got the uh, Footpath Flowers by Sydney Smith and John Arlo. Lawson, I think the author is. Um, yeah, which I've got here, and that use of color is the same thing. It's this, and again, it's a like a beautiful idea, but told um, really mm. like in a really simplistic way. So this girl and her father are walking home, and it's all black and white, aside from the girl's coat to start with, and she, it's, it's very urban kind of landscape. And she starts to, all the adults are just hurrying along, doing their thing. And she's noticing mm -hmm. these flowers in the cracks. And she's noticing these like moments, like these colors. And so she starts to notice them and starts to pick the flowers as they're going along their journey. And as she's walking through and she's got the flowers and she's noticing these pops of color, she starts to then notice sad people or whatever and she starts to give the flowers away hmm. and as she does like the color sort of spreads um throughout and so it's kind of like you know I mean you can read whatever you like into it really obviously it's like this idea hmm. of noticing and finding the joy but also then spreading that joy and that kindness around and so like by the end of it hmm. you've got all this color hmm. but the one that I thought was really affecting is one of the things she gives away she puts one of her flowers down by um she finds a, a dead bird in the path and she puts it by the bird. Yeah, that was really moving. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's a beautiful use of colour. Um, mm -hmm. And I will talk about um, another set at some point, which has an amazing use of colour. But I love that also when we talk about John Classen, his use of colour is yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. um, especially in his most recent, that, that, I don't know if it is his most recent now, but it was, The, the Skull, which I loved last mm -hmm. year. Yeah, Absolutely that loved. was... Amazing. And that, yeah, and the use of color in that to mm. so the light for this character who's like, like as the hope sort of the light kind of for me as it went through kind of represented hope and as mm -hmm. she got more and more hopeful there's mm -hmm. more use of light with that within the book and if you look at the panels from the first panel to the last panel they're kind of a, like a mirroring but more hopeful mm -hmm. by the end and I just yeah I think he's that amazing. Have you read the um, Mac Bonnet and John Classen book Extra Yarn I think it's called? Mm -hmm. Ah yeah, yes yeah. Like black and white pictures or the town is very very black and white and this little girl has got some multicolored yarn makes herself I think makes herself a jumper first doesn't she and it's like the only colorful thing in the book 
And as the book goes on, she sort of makes different things for different people until like the whole town is like all knitted or crocheted. It's really, really beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, it's really oh, it is a beautiful yeah. book. Yeah, I, I, I like John Clausen's work so much that I, you know, anytime I see there's something new that he's illustrated, I'm going to pick it up. And yeah. that is how I found out about a House Held Up by Trees. Mm. Oh. And, uh, it's a, a, a poem by Ted Kuzer. And mm. And the poem is fantastic. It's and really touching about a house that was once loved, full of people, and when it's abandoned, mm. trees grow up all around it. Mm. Yeah. See? Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. So it's just so he illustrated the poem. Yes. It's amazing. Oh, wow. And, yeah. um, and that's one thing that I find with picture books is, you know, I might pick up something like um, this one because I want to read about the artist, Alma Thomas. Mm -hmm. And then I discover that the illustrator, in this case, it's Love is Wise, will say, what else have they done? Mm -hmm. so, yes. And I've just picked up this one. I love that one. I've read that. Oh, so wow. I love Zora Neale Hurston, and, and so I really Zora Neale Hurston story that's reinterpreted by um, Ibram X. Kendi. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. So you know, one one can lead to another, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I had the same thing with like um, illustrators leading. So I, I discovered my favorite illustrator. Actually, we're going to talk about favorite illustrators. Actually, so this might be nice. I don't know if it's a nice segue into it, but um, my favorite currently, my, one of my favorite illustrators. And I want to seek out her work. Is and I'm, I've talked about her so much, and Shelley knows I talk about her so much. Melissa Castrillon, or, oh, yeah. Castrillon or Castrillon, and she, I discovered her work. Um, so there she is, mm -hmm. ah, the balcony. So pretty. Um, so I discovered, I. I knew I love these middle grade books. Where are they? Hi, Melissa. Um, the Pinch of Magic books, which I've got here. Actually, let me just grab one of them so you can see. So yeah, so these covers I loved, and I was like, oh, I just love these covers. They're amazing. And I looked up the illustrator, and I realised that I know I'd seen a picture book by this illustrator before at school. We had a competition. Um, we did a, a, a it wasn't a competition. It was a, a reading, a reading and creative writing project that I was, I, I kind of helped design for a group of schools to do for mm. children. And it was, we used, picked some books for it. And one of the books we picked was this one, Mighty Min. And it's mm. the same illustrator. So suddenly then I became obsessed with this illustrator. <laughs> and I was just like, ah, trying to find everything that she did. And she's got that amazing um very natural like you can see like you said seeing the hand of the artist you can see it mm. sort of oh. strokes of her pen or brush or pencil whatever it is she's using um but I love the fact that she has this kind of very very distinctive style and it's also very um she uses a very limited color palette and she kind of blends she picks about I don't know probably about five colors maybe and blends them so to make other colors so it's kind of like a very distinctive style and very clever use of color so I just absolutely yeah I adore this illustrator she's just so good so if anyone's never heard of, like Mighty Min is um one of her books but the, the balcony which I also love is wordless pretty much mm. but um just they're just so beautiful these books inside so like I said about the use of color and again talking about use of color the book is about a girl who moves from the countryside to the city and in the beginning she's again she has this kind of limited color palette that she uses but she blends a lot of them together to make different colors but when the girl moves to the city you see the color kind of draining from this to kind of it just drains away to these reds and purples and mm -hmm. and blues and stuff so yeah so that's Currently, I've got a million favorite illustrators, but she is the moment mm -hmm. one that yeah. I've been quite obsessed with the past couple of years. But fine, and then suddenly you see see them like on other books and stuff, and like the other work they've done, mm -hmm. and, and you're just sort of ah, 
yeah, you kind of follow them down a, a, a hole. And the other one that was Levi Pinfold, who I'll talk about at some point, but um, he did illustrations for The Lost Bear by Hannah Gold, which is another middle grade book. And then I found um, The Dam, which is um, by David Almond, and he illustrated that as well, which I absolutely love. So it's kind of like you said, Linda, you kind of, you spot them in one thing and then you're going to kind of go down these routes and you're like, ah, there's more. So you discover these illustrators through different mm -hmm. different ways. I love that. So good. Mm -hmm. So um, favourite illustrators. Have we brought along some examples of favourite illustrators? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my my all time, I mean, my most nostalgic, I will say, favorite illustrator is Hobby, Holly Hobby. Oh. And that's because when I was a little girl, her character, Holly Hobby, was really, really popular. And she was everywhere. But I know, of, I know of the character, but I didn't know she was the illustrator. Her well. name is Holly Hobby. So um, she called her character Holly Hobby, but but the artist and the writer of the books and the stories is also Holly Hobby, and Great she name. now she mm -hmm. yeah, it is, and she now writes. She took a, a long break because she was going through some fa family stuff, and when she started illustrating and writing again, her style completely changed. It's nothing like it was when she was making Holly Hobby. When she was doing Holly Hobby, it was like autumn, autumnal kind of looking colors and very old fashioned prairie kind of look. And now things are bright and they're, they're still done in a, in a watercolor kind of illustration. But um, when I discovered this, was when my kids were still at home and we were just walking through a regular store. It wasn't a bookstore. It wasn't anything like that. I don't even remember what store it was. But I saw Holly Hobby as the illustrator of a book called Toot and Puddle. And um, it had pigs on the cover. And I was like, Holly Hobby? Pigs? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and I sat down right on the floor <laughs> in the middle of the store and took the book off the shelf and started reading. And I got so choked up looking at this book and recognizing the style, but, but not the color palette. And the story was absolutely enchanting. And she, she, tugs at my heartstrings every single time I read her. But um, but the, the fact that she was still there, um, you know, still doing things as when I was an adult and not just a child any longer, I think really got me. The other one that I love, well, not the only other one, but <laughs> one of the other ones is Barbara Cooney. I love, I love this story in particular. I really love, but she, I, you're going to find out I'm a watercolor girl. I love, mm -hmm. I love watercolor illustrations and, yes. and things that this is not use of color. I, I mean, this is complete use of color. This is not, this is not gradual use of color, but I just love, this is just a little town in Maine. And she begins to make the world a more beautiful place. That's what the story is about. But mm -hmm. oh. it's, I think I've uh, seen that on your channel before. I think it's beautiful. I think it's one of my, my kids love it. And then she did Island Boy as well. And this one is she she was you know, born and raised in Maine. And so it's very Maine-esque, but you can see like the children having a pillow fight, whoops, mm. you know, and they're up in the attic of their house, but it illustrates the mainland versus their island because their island is so um, like sparse in comparison. Mm. Wow. And so anyway, and it's just the story of, 
of him growing up. And that's basically what all of her stories are about, are about the, the child and the, the way that how we are raised um, often influences who we are as adults and the, the things that we are taught in childhood often um, bring us back to those places of nostalgia and wonder and that kind of thing. And picture books do that for me. Hmm. Like the, the, I love nostalgia and I love memory. And the fact that um, picture books often take me to those times, uh, even if they're not ones that I read when I was a child, it's, they, they have that tie for me. They, they constantly take me back to something I may not even think that I had a memory of, you know, but all of a sudden something comes to mind because I'm reading about this child in this situation. And I'm like, oh, I have a core memory of something like that, you know? So anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really special thing about picture books, Dia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, the way that they bring us back to our child selves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. There's a a great picture book. Um, I've mentioned it to you before, Dia, by um, uh, Shirley Hughes. He's a great British picture book illustrator and and she's got a book called Dogger which makes me want to cry every time I read it. <laughs> Have you got some Shirley Hughes there? Oh yay. I started looking her up and trying to find her after, after mm-hmm. we talked. She has the most beautiful representations of childhood and family life mm-hmm. and I just I, I love her book and Dogger I've read it so it's one of my favorite books through the children much. And my first class ever that I had was a little boy who loved that book so much. And he would be like, let's read Dogger. And I, I had to say, sometimes we have to read other stories as well because the <laughs> other children are like, no, I don't want to read Dogger again. Um, but I, it, it, it completely captures, he loses his favorite toy, Dogger. So this little boy, Davey, loses Dogger. And the distress of this, because it just brought home to me your sort of teddy bears, your cuddly toys, whatever was special to you mm. is so meaningful. They're meaningful to you. They're, so you. they're your best friend. They're real to you. And to lose them, the, the distress. And it just made me, I just felt this child's distress because it just brought that back to me of how, yeah. how my toys were so meaningful to me. And, and yeah, I just, exactly what you were just saying, that brings back that memory of childhood of, feeling those feelings mm-hmm. definitely yeah um mo willem's nuffle bunny captures that as well that <laughs> lost boy no Williams you know, my lost favorite her. Shirley Hughes yeah. is alfie gets in first <laughs> you got it there haven't you <laughs> such a great book and i love the fact that with this you've got what's happening on one side of the door i like your page but boundary is almost the door because you've got oh, what's yes. happening inside with Alfie who's locked in the house <laughs> a mistake and you've got what's happening outside the door as this drama builds <laughs> um, it's so great such a great book that's funny um I know that Dia and I share a love for Elsa Elsa Basco. I love Elsa Basco. she's oh. amazing I'm like which way do I go okay that's it oh Wow, I absolutely adore. adore her. She has this, she's very, it's very whimsical mm-hmm. and always rooted in nature. Mm-hmm. So always, always. And she does this thing where one side of the page is black and white. Oh, wow. And the other side of the page is clean color. Amazing. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. And really so beautiful. Like, they are. They're incredible. And she, every, like the, the little children that are lined up there um, no. are mushrooms. You can mm-hmm. tell. Um, but she does 
she does different kinds of children. She'll do flower children. She'll do mushroom children. She'll do moss children. Mm. And they, they just represent different things in nature. And the way that she tells the story about the importance of those things that the children are representing in nature and why it's important you know, to nurture those things. It's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. I have to look this author up. She's, it's ancient. She's an, I mean, she's, she's been around since longer than I have. Yeah, <laughs> she, she's and been so when you look at these older picture books, you see how artists worked with the limitations of printing technology at the time, you know, like, like using black and white on one side or um, having a very limited color palette because of the inks that, mm-hmm. you know, and the expense of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it. That's interesting, isn't it? And, and what you were just like that, like there's, you know, we were talking about the Very Hungry Caterpillar and that book has the holes in it. And there is a story about that to do with, the publishers and not wanting to print so like basically the, the way it was printed in the way that it would have needed to be because the pages are shorter yeah. there's holes through it and I think it almost didn't get approved because of the techniques involved to publish mm-hmm. to print it were it was too complex so it was set, mm-hmm. it felt to be too complex so huh. publishing actually has a quite a lot of like it, there are they've got to have considerations to or back then they used to have to have considerations mm-hmm. to how mm-hmm. a book would be printed so that's really okay. fascinating actually. This, this is um i love that book one of the oldest picture book is still in print um called millions of cats um <laughs> it's all this sort of uh, printmaking style it's just so lovely um oh, wow. so yeah, beautiful fascinating and um, my mum bought me this copy because we used to love it when I was younger and uh, this was a 90th anniversary edition wow um, and I can see we're like now coming up to 100 years I remember watching um the story about Beatrix Potter the the movie that came out was it called Miss Potter? 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 Yeah, that was a good film. <laughs> um, but she at the publishers when she is there at the print at the printers, and they keep having to reprint uh, one of the pages because she's like, no, it's too much ink. You you you've got too thick of lines. I don't mm-hmm. want you to see the lines. I want you to see. The, you know, the watercolor, I want you to see, I want these delicate. And that was one of the first times that I was really aware of um, the fact that things could be printed differently than they're done in the original form. Mm. You know, that, and then I think Shelley has talked about this, but Edward Gorey is another one yeah. that when you don't print them, the way that he originally creates them, they don't have the same impact. Mm -mm. There's something about when he creates a tiny image and you have to really sit and look at that image in order to capture what it is that he wants you to see. It's, it's completely different than when they take that image and they blow it up and you, Mm -hmm. all you're seeing is imperfections and all you're seeing is, is pieces that don't quite work and that kind of thing. Whereas when it's small, it's tiny, you're having to really get in there. So I think there's definitely something to be said about trying to get the the printing off as close to the original art as possible. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. when you actually, I was looking at this Children of the Forest, it was originally pr- printed in Swedish Mm-hmm. in 1910 so you're right she's yeah. been around like several yeah. times she's over. been around a long time she yeah. is ancient she's ancient for sure beautiful yeah. did you bring any favorite illustrators along lindy oh I, yeah i have so many and i'm really glad um jack that you have a canadian book to talk about with uh, sydney smith i mm. love his work uh, I don't have any here right now, but 
um, small in the city. I've got that here. <laughs> well, that's one yeah, that's that he, he wrote mm -hmm. as well as illustrated. Mostly yeah. he's known for illustrating other people's work. This is um, amazing. Like I, I got it out of the library because it's one I've wanted for a while. I, I, I kind of wanted to do a deep dive into Sidney Smith, actually, as an yeah, illustrator. Um, but yeah. So. He, he illustrated Jordan Scott's I Talk Like a River. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Mm. So good. Yeah. Um, An other Canadian illustrator that I adore is Julie Flett. And mm -hmm. uh, she's a, a Métis writer and, and illustrator. In this case, uh, she's illustrating um, David Robertson's story about children in residential school, Indigenous children. Oh. Mm -hmm. And this is one of her own wild berries. Show it maybe what it looks like inside. It might be more interesting because the um, the glare won't be there. But talk about simplicity. Yes. Mm. Gorgeous. Uh, an an interesting thing about picture books that are created by. Um, First Nations and Métis uh, creators in Canada is that they're often almost all outdoors. You rarely see an indoor scene in them. Hmm. That is interesting. And another, uh, oh, this is a duo of Canadian illustrators and writers. They both write and That's illustrate. Uh, oh, wow. Kiora McClear and and Julie Morstad. Here, see it better on the inside. Wow. wow. It's beautiful. This is, this is actually a picture book biography of Elsa Schiaparelli. And it's called Bloom. Love it. Stunning. Mm. Hmm. And another illustrator that I really like is uh, English, Jackie Morris. Oh, I've got Jackie oh, Morris down as one of my favorites. I brought the same book. I love <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. This one Morris is amazing. That, this is one that any adult who loves words mm -hmm. will immediately just so um, beautiful. I have with. Lost Spells. Lost Spells is beautiful oh, as well. Yes, the Lost Words. I love that the idea of this is because. Um, Rob, Rob McFarlane is a nature writer over mm -hmm. here. I have not read any of his books, but um, <laughs> I've have. been meaning to. And that. he and Jackie Morris noticed that, that they they were they read something about the fact that lots of words for nature are disappearing from mm -hmm. children's vocabulary because they just a lot of these words that we would have known are disappearing completely um and so they decided to do this and it's a kind of collection of words and and, and poems about nature and using these words because mm -hmm. that's why it's called the lost words and um and jackie morris illustrated i mean look at look at this it's pictures of nature they're just absolutely mm -hmm. stunning and the 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 way that the whole book is printed as well, like the, the words are sometimes like falling off the page almost. So mm -hmm. you've got kind of, where are we? What's the one I was trying to show you? Oops. But yeah, they're kind of these full colour illustrations of nature. And then look, so there's a word sort of jumbled in between the trees there. So you can kind of, mm -hmm. see. and yeah. some of them are kind of more straightforward poems, but this is um, a bluebells in the woods. So the word, there's lots of letters, but the letters for bluebell are in blue and they're scattered throughout the woods so you can read bluebell. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jackie Morris. When, I'm glad uh, you <laughs> chose Jackie Morris, Lindy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that one too. Um, when Shelley and I read um, The Ring of Brightwater, mm -hmm. right after we read it, I read lost words and I sent Shelly I was like look at the otters <laughs> I was like I had to share otters with Shelly every time I turned around because rain yeah. and water was about it was cute otter. it was cute it was sweet beautiful wow Mm -hmm. Do you have any favorite illustrators you brought along Shelly you brought along the children of the forest but did you have any other I ones? have um so 
this is kind of an, this is one of my favorite picture books of all time dark george hmm. it's so funny because the mom the mom is worried about her jo dog george her pup george and she's always she's like bark and he'll say meow <laughs> and what the doctor does is that he goes and he sticks his hand and you know down and he pulls out a cat and he says bark george and it says you know he's like you know quack you know so he, he does that and the funny well I mean, and i'm gonna spoil it so you know so i'm sorry for y'all a little bit but then you know she he he finally barks and he gets all the things out he finally barks and the end of the book she's like so excited that her dog you know george can bark so she goes She's in a crowd and she's like, bark, George. And he goes, hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and about five years old, I've noticed, the kids get it. About five, five like kindergarten. Um, okay. And they get it and they laugh so hard. So when I was, I went through a stint where I was trying to draw. And I, we noticed that Jules Pfeiffer is actually, does everything pretty much in one stroke. And oh. we were like, oh, she starts here with the glasses and you can see like you could follow her stroke my husband's really good at this he went to art school but he was like it's amazing because she really just does it all in or he she or he i don't know does it all in one one line and mm -hmm. i was so impressed because the whole time i was like the art is okay i don't love it and then it made me appreciate because as I was learning to draw, I realized that just because I drew a chair doesn't mean that the person looking at it will register it as a as a chair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I learned that a little bit, kind of the hard way. I was like, look what I drew, Ted. He's like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of that going on. And, <laughs> and so then I realized that Jules Pfeiffer, not only is it simple, but most of the strokes are done, if not all, in one continuous line. And that they're wow. able to communicate exactly what they wanted to communicate in that one stroke to their audience. And so I've learned to very much appreciate this and other styles that look, seem simplistic. But when you really look at it, you realize, oh my goodness, that that takes talent. <laughs> the artistry behind it. It's quite the talent to wow. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with the, such variety of art styles in picture mm. books, uh, children and all of us of all ages can get exposed to, you know, something like Jules Pfeiffer, where it's really expressive and, uh, you know, just line drawings and, and then really detailed watercolors or, mm. uh, or collage, more, you know, graphic. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. traditional graphic style stylistic so uh, we we can we can we can figure out what we like um, i would say in the pile of books that i've bought with me like everything is so different like yes. what you were saying oh i like watercolors or i like particularly this but mine are just so random mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. like so many different art styles i think i just appreciate books and the illustrations and all the different things that they can do with it from looking at this collection that I've brought with me. Now that's it. And, and like you said, that variety, it kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier or asking earlier, Shelley, about whether that gives us an appreciation of art and actually for it kind of like you said, like as Lindy's just said, it's kind of you can kind of figure out what you're drawn to mm. because there's such a variety of art styles within picture books. Yeah. Um, mm. But I'm kind of like you, Alice. I've got a huge <laughs> variety of different things sat here. But I think, I think coming back to what we've said about, like, why do we enjoy picture books? I think one of the main things for me, and Dia, you said it a bit as well, it just really appeals to the child in me. Like, my inner child just obviously loves this. And I, I just my main thing that I love about them I think apart from nostalgia is like the playfulness the playfulness of language has always really really appealed to me mm -hmm. but the playfulness of language and the interaction of that with pictures yeah. is so brilliant in picture books especially when you've got a picture book where the illustration is saying more or something different to and this is why I love John Classen um than the text is saying so mm -hmm. the text is saying oh like in John Classen no I haven't seen your hat 
but you can see that the creature is wearing his hat yeah. and uh, it's so just great. like the humor of children's books but just playfulness generally just really really appeals to me and I don't think I get that from any other aspect of my reading life mm -hmm. so I, I would say that the books that I tend to read outside of picture books would be like really sad <laughs> mysteries <laughs> like murderous pull, pull your heart <laughs> out thing whereas <laughs> picture books are just pure joy and playfulness and happy and childhood you know so it's very different for me than other aspects of reading that's that's in that sean turn essay he talks about mm. picture books are about play about yeah. your mm -hmm. curiosity and playfulness and um mm. yeah because i the same that there, there's that sam and dave dig a hole oh, yeah. that's what i was saying and the reason this is so this is recently it's my favorite book to read with kids so this is one's goings in the bag if i go to a school so it's um they want to dig sam and dave want to dig a hole because they want to find something spectacular we won't stop digging until we find something spectacular <laughs> and so as they dig they're digging and they keep they're like they can't find it they haven't found anything spectacular so you can see it says they kept digging but they couldn't find anything spectacular but you can see <laughs> there's this diamond that they just have missed and as mm. they keep digging and you're reading it the children just scream with laughter because they keep digging and the dog there's a dog in the picture and the dog keeps noticing that there's stuff that they're missing i kind of i'm trying to get it across but yeah they, they keep missing these diamonds so they keep digging and as you go through the book like they're they're digging around <laughs> these big diamonds <laughs> let's go up and let's go down and they keep digging around all of these huge things um and that's when we were talking Shelley and I sort of put in our why you know we want what's the definition of a picture book for us and it's like where the picture plays a kind of integral part to the story mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and that is a perfect example of and like and and we found a hat another one it was like we, we, oh, we where you can you you cannot if you just read the text, and I have done that with children, actually, I've done that with picture books where um, oh. I've just read the text without the pictures. And then you read the book with the pictures and it's kind of like you get a completely different reading mm -hmm. of things. And it's an, it's amazing. So, yeah, We Found a Hat is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely you. hilarious. Are you familiar with Rosie's Walk? By Pat yes, Hutchins. Pat Hutchins. Oh yeah. yes, so that's I love another that one book. where what's going on in the pictures is yeah. so different from the text. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and kids I love it. Like, I love that. Love it. It. A lot of this book, yeah. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Yeah, <laughs> just looking. Basically, <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> that's it. And that's it. Because also, when you really get that joy, they're in on the joke. They're like, yeah. I know what's going on here. Like they've got that kind of. Um, a narrow, like an overview of the story that the characters don't have, and they're kind of like ah, mm. <laughs> the children just adore it when that they've got silliness that. just so appeals to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, it's wonderful. Actually, um, Steve Donahue re reviewed a book, a picture book, on like the radio show that he appears on, and it's something like who peed in my pants or something oh, who, yeah there's like there's there's a few like that there's and i was like you know of course the bear or something and the little creature is walking around and interviewing everybody saying who peed in my pants <laughs> like who did it and it's like everyone's in on the joke including the kids being Except like him. there's only one person that could have <laughs> done this done that and I thought it was, and he pointed out that that's a good lesson. It's just like, even though you're trying to get away with something that is so obvious, that could so easily be kind of fixed. If you just owned up to the fact that mm -hmm. something had happened that you didn't mean to happen and we could just get over it. Um, but that he said that it was such a, it would be a good, such a good thing because you're not talking down to kids. You're kind of letting them in on the joke and this mm -hmm. learning experience. And I mm -hmm. really love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, there's that one the picture book with the uh, like who pooped on my head. That's the one the I was thinking of. With the mole, is it the the mole? And he's walking around with a poop on his head. <laughs> I think it's the, the over here. They call it like um the little the little mole who knew it was none of his business. <laughs> it wasn't his business. Yeah, on yeah, head. yeah. I, I think that might be the title in Canada. His business. Well. That's what I tell. <laughs> That's what I call it when it's time to take Poppy out. I'm like, it's business time. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs>
<laughs> you know, uh, so sweet. I uh, I think I'm looking at my notes because I made lots of notes for for why I read children's books. Um, <laughs> but I was I was just um, thinking about the fact that we and we kind of mentioned this earlier about how when a story is just a good story, why would we relegate it to a certain age group? Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But I was thinking about it also from an author perspective of the fact that if an author has a story to tell that they have been carrying around with them and they take the time to kind of distill it down to its essence, and then find an illustrator or illustrate it themselves in a, in a way that communicates beyond the distillation, beyond just that very essence. Why would we say that this is only for kids? Why would we mm-hmm. want to keep that from ourselves? I, it just doesn't make sense to me that, that you would say this, this is a children's author. Mm. No, this is an author and they have a story to tell. And it was obviously a story worth telling. What is it that they want to say both in word and picture? And I think another reason is because I grew up very poor. I was dirt poor when I was growing up. Um, single parent household, you know, just um, not it, tiny town, you know, <laughs> nothing, nothing was available at my fingertips. And picture books gave me a way to, um, you know, become aware of art, become aware of what it does to a poem, what it does to a story. Um, I do have these little golden books. Do you guys have Mm -hmm. these over in Mm -hmm. England and Canada? Um, This is an uh, an illustrator, Eloise Wilkin, and she did a lot of picture books for her little golden book. And I don't know if you can see them, but Mm -hmm. they're just these sweet child, pudgy children, (laughs) pudgy cherubic children. Um, Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And stuff. And, but, but she also does things like, ah, I'm not doing very well here guys. So (laughs) she also does things that, that are just absolutely even when even when there's children in them, the the nature illustrations that she does are things that just you you as a child you're like I recognize what it is that she is illustrating. I recognize that I want to be that little that little boy, you know, nuzzling that bird. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to see baby birds in a nest and um and you get that when you have museums and and art installations to go to but when you're in a little tiny town and you have no money (laughs) picture books became my museums and my and my you know um art installations for that artist Mm -hmm. and and so i love them for that reason too but yeah, I was just the, the the there are infinite reasons why mm-hmm. you know I think that it's important, but but there's there's something that is so absolutely incredible about um, the breaking down of these complex ideas into their very simplest form and adding color to them or adding design to them and the way that 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 just creates something in us that we don't get in any other 
opportunity. You know, there's there's no other medium out there really that that gives that to us than picture books. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. A very special medium. Mm -hmm. They're very special. <laughs> there's there's a a humor book aimed at adults called everything mm -hmm. i need to know i learned from little golden books <laughs> uh, i love that diane modro maybe something like that uh, but she has actual um illustrations from many little golden books including that one god that you showed yes. us and it's really quite there's another cool. one of hers this is another one of eloise wilkin yeah. Mm -hmm. You can tell how old it is. <laughs> well how loved. It is. Yep. Well loved. Mm -hmm. Miss me. Well, in well, I think um I think we've chatted. Unless you had anything else, I was gonna say, you know, maybe we could as we we kind of close out our conversation, if there is and I don't mean to put anyone on the spot, but if there is maybe a, an illustrator or an author that we should, that you would like to recommend sort of in closing, I would like to know. <laughs> so anyone can come as sort of like a signing off moment. Um, oh, I love that duo. I love that one too. Oh, I love that book. But Janet and Alan Allberg generally, my favorite. They're the so ones. Good. They're they're the books from you know I said to you very few childhood memories of it but the Olbergs are a big mm -hmm. memory from mm -hmm. very young yeah definitely. and this one I still know the entire text off by heart and I'm now Peach, Peach Pear oh. Plum I Spy Tom <laughs> yeah. Thumb Tom yeah. Thumb in a in a in the middle I spy, I'm in the cupboard I Spy Mother Hubbard oh yeah. yeah Mother Hubbard on the stairs yeah. I Spy the Three Bears mm -hmm. yeah so smart such a smart <laughs> book. All of my kids and all of my grandkids love that one too. It's book. just a timeless. Kids love it. It's that spotting things, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is why the the I I shared it on my channel already. But the the one um, that I think is too old, probably text wise, for kids is this one. This you belong here. And it's mm. by M. H. Clark and illustrated by Isabel Arnaud. Ah, I love Isabel Arnaud. By Me the too. way, I do. I too. love her. But the, the, the text is is probably too much. But there's, I'm trying to find the one that that really brought this, like sent this idea home to me. Was um, we were talking about home you know that's that's what the story is about but i sat down with my four-year-old grandson and and didn't read mm. the words we just looked at it mm. and i turned to this page and all you see is very little color except for that big pop of red and what is it doing it's leading you right to the door mm. of home Beautiful. and so and you can see that there's light in the window of the cottage as well and it's yellow and then when you get to this illustration can you see it let's see mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, yeah yeah you there. can just about see it there yeah okay and so it's it's in a city like there's all these other houses but all of these ones are completely gray and there's no color. And so I turned to this page and Jonesy goes, there's home. Oh. Because there's light <laughs> in that window yeah. and there's red in that bush. Oh. And so I love that. No, it was, I so that. I really like this illustrator. She's got a couple of other illustrated books too that I, I but I haven't, I don't have them here. <laughs> Um, right. Do you guys know uh, Valerian Labond? Mm -hmm. You know her. She's Welsh. This was originally written in Welsh. Oh, Good interesting. Hmm. And it's just the story of this quilt that her mama makes when she, when they're still 
over in Wales before they immigrate and the way that the quilt goes with them and what oh. the quilt represents once they get there. And it's, that's, it's a really beautiful art style as well. My, one amazing. of my only ones that's not watercolor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you don't know her, she, she has quite a few books out, but this yeah. is one of the only ones in English. <laughs> ah, they're all in at Welsh least, at least the only one that I can get in America in English I don't know all right there were quite a few people on the comments actually mentioning a few really good um mentioning their favorites yeah um, there were Let's did think. anybody mention where the wild things are oh, oh, no. No. I love um, them back that's Chris a great too, Zendak, yeah. where the wild things are is my other there's where the wild things are the Olbergs, um David McKee and John Burningham they're the authors I remember from my childhood you remember like the very few that stick out and pop out for me but where the wild things are is it's just very very special so mm -hmm. uh Kat mentions Chris Van Allsburg ah Love that's what I was gonna say him. so what yeah, total yeah, well yes Brilliant, uh, wordless, so, uh, great uh, creative writing prompts. Mm -hmm. This is why I um. So basically, you know, what you were saying, Shelley, if you've got any few you'd like to mention, and so if I had to pick favorite picture books now, if I had like to rescue some picture books <laughs> from my house, <laughs> it would be this, which yeah. is the Mysteries of uh, Harris Burdick by Chris Van Olsberg, which is just literally. Um, so it, I love the idea behind it. And Chris Van Olberg is like, oh, my publisher talked about this man, Harris Burdick, who came in and left some pictures and titles for stories and said he'd be back with the stories the next day if the publisher was interested and never came back. And these are those pictures and these are those titles. So that's all there is in the book. And it's brilliant for creative writing, like you said, Lindy, like the in inspiration. Ooh. So you've got like all these pictures which are just breathtaking. And mm -hmm. then you've got the um, the title. So this one's um, Mr. Linden's Library. And the, it says he had warned her about the book and now it was too late. And then and there's the picture and the book. You can see there's something growing out of the book. Um, and then you've got um, like quite a lot of them. So where is it? Bird? Oh, yeah. This one. Just dessert. She lowered the knife and it grew brighter. And this is the... Um, the picture the pumpkin so yeah so you've got these really amazing pictures and i've done this with, i love with it year six children so uh, 10 11 year old love this book so oh. much and there's a famous um there's a book of collection of short stories by famous authors responding to this um so you've got lemony snicket and stephen king and various oh fam really famous authors called the chronicles of harris burdick which i have over there as well and they've written their versions of the stories. Um, so there was that one. And the other thing I would rescue is Aaron Becker's Journey Trilogy, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I just, this, They're beautiful. I get, I've read this again with young children, with older children. And you know, you were saying about talking wordless picture books. So when I read this with younger children, I start off, we talk about the girl and talking about use of color because in the start, it's just the girl with her red scooter and it, she's in the city and the only pop of colour are her toys and she's really lonely and then she goes on this magical journey with this red crayon and the red crayon, she draws a door to another world and she goes through. And the colour is used so amazingly well in this book. But I've used this with um, very young children, very uh, much older children, to talk about symbolism and metaphor and allegory and um is so much within this this book mm -hmm. and the trilogy itself so i'm just gonna have to i keep thinking i'm gonna have to do a video where i sort of like break down what i've noticed in it because of course everyone will notice something different in it and mm -hmm. also aaron becker like there's some great stuff where he talks about the fact that yeah it, he wants people to he likes what people recognize from it and i'm currently doing some writing with children now because i teach online still so i'm doing some writing with some children at the moment and they've been inspired by this and they're writing stories in response to it and one of them wanted to write the story about the boy in the book because she meets a boy who's also got a crayon but we don't hear his backstory so someone's written that someone's just retold the story so yeah these are my books I would 
rescue, rescue. If, from, if I had to pee one. And the last thing, I'm going to give an honourable mention to this because no one really talks about it that much, and it's I Go Quiet by David mm. Remay. And this book I love because it's about uh, being introverted. And so this one was the one that really resonated with me because the words are beautiful, and it's, like, about a very introverted child, and the mm. illustrations are very unusual. So that's my last one I'm going to mention, but she says, Sometimes I Go Quiet is the opening. And you see this girl mm. walking through this landscape, and the pictures are just so affecting and so beautiful. She says, um, sometimes I feel like a rock in a rattle, yet I make no sound. And you see all these people, the illustrations are just, just incredible. so good. Yeah. Yeah. incredible. And um, she finds her kind of um, her respite in, in the world of picture, in the world of books and fiction. So she mm. kind of says, like, from time to time, I imagine where I'd like to be. Um, and then she sort of reads, when I read, I know there are languages I will speak. When I read, I know there is a world beneath my branches. Look at, oh, that illustration. So yes, I want to recommend that because I hardly ever see it anywhere or anyone talking about it. And this mm -hmm. book made me choke up a little bit reading yeah. it because it was just perfect. So that's my, I'm going to stop now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> and I could talk with her about it. But that's my ones I wanted to share for sure. What about Alice, Wendy? What about you all? I think mm -hmm. Alice had one that you were, you were going to hold. Oh, you did the each pair one. No, that she has another one. Yeah, um, oh. I just saw Rose had mentioned in the comments. Um, Quentin Blake. Quentin Blake. <laughs> yeah, he's a really famous illustrator, but has illustrated for a lot of people that you would recognise. Like I'll put mustard in the custard. Well. Michael Rosen. <laughs> but this is one of his own books that I am very very fond of. This book, Miss Magnolia. Okay. And uh, I love all of the Michael Rosen and Quentin Blake illustrated books because I love Michael yeah. Rosen so much. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I've got so many here. We could go on all day, to be honest. Uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry. yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's the same. I could listen all day, to be fair. Lindy. Lindy. Oh, I, I've, I've shared many of them already. Okay. What I would, I love The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. Oh, that's I a good one. grew up with Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, but The Little House I read as an adult, and that was one that made me want to cry. There was just something so sweet and beautiful about that. Um, and then I also have uh, Jane Dyer here. Oh, yeah. And this oh. is by Mem Fox, who I really enjoy. She writes pretty simple and easy to read books. And I think it's watercolor. <laughs> but the size of this is just beautiful and big. And it's a nighttime story without feeling dark, you know, mm. and just about going to bed. And she's got all these different animals going to bed. But the book that I like more of course, is going to be Sophie's masterpiece. That one's so it is, good. It's so uh, good. I love it. it. And it's written by Eileen Spinelli, I think. Um, but Which, illustrated by Spinelli Jane, about a spider, no. you know? About a spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spinelli. And then it's uh, Jane Dyer who does the illustrations. And it's very sweet. It's a very sweet it is. Um, tale. But of course, because I really love, I love bugs. I love bugs and picture books. Yeah. Too. I just, I said, I don't know why. <laughs> and so she has, you know, her care, her main character is this spider, you know, who is working on something very special. Um, Beautiful. And it's really just spectacular. And I do that. And I've done that thing too. And I think it's for a lot of picture book lovers, you find someone you're like, mm -hmm. What's everything else they've ever illustrated ever <laughs> that my library has that I can get a hold of right now? Um, and then to also see the evolution of their illustrations and the, um, what they gravitate towards, whether it be color palette or tools, so the tools that they um, the, that they use to create is really always fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is a new favorite. I just really love the way that it's sang sound. Rotten bond. So, oh. there, mm -hmm. there. That's this is the illustrator. Lindy, what were you gonna say? 
Oh, I just thought of another thing um, and how I find new picture books. And Ooh. that is by publisher. So <sighs> Enchanted Lion is one of my favorite uh, publishers to go to. Enchanted Lion and also um, Levine Corrido. Yeah. Okay. Funny enough oh. that you mentioned publishers. So, Lindy, actually, I've just been sent a book for review by a publisher that I'd not heard of before, and I'm definitely going to be looking up more of their books because I've had a look at their catalogue, and it's just stunning. The publisher is um, Greystone Kids. Have you heard oh. of them before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had never heard of them, but this is the book they sent me, which is called The Voyage, okay. and it's translated from French, and it's about... Basically, it's um, about a journey that this a voyage this person takes from the from their home island. I mean, look at these illustrations; they're just amazing. And it's a, like an allegorical tale about life and finding your way. But look, it's just amazing. I couldn't believe it when they sent me this. Um, they were like, "Oh, yeah, we'll send." Because they emailed me, "Would you could we, can we send you anything to review?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." Because your books look amazing in your catalogue, and they sent me this, and I was like, "Oh my gosh." Um, <laughs> This is so stunning. So I'm definitely, I recommend this publisher because their books look a lot, a, quite a lot of nature theme in some of their books as well. Mm -hmm. looks things. So yeah, I'd not heard of them before. So I'm definitely, um, I'd recommend that as an illustrator for good picture books, uh, a, a publisher for good picture books, definitely. Mm. All right. Well, I am going to end our live stream. Yes. So I'm going to say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye to everyone, uh, our, our online audience, I suppose. Yes. And thank you all for hanging out. Bye. Bye.